The learning objectives of this module are to know the indications and contraindications for high-flow nasal cannula use and to learn how to set up humidified high-flow nasal cannulae on an infant in the neonatal intensive care unit. The high-flow nasal cannula circuit is a non-invasive method to support spontaneous breathing in a preterm or term neonate, which does not require a ventilator. It was introduced into neonatal respiratory care as a way to provide positive distending pressure in babies with respiratory distress. The circuit delivers an adjustable mixture of oxygen and air at a variable flow rate of 1 to 8 litres per minute. The blended oxygen is heated to near body temperature of 37 degrees centigrade and humidified to improve tolerance. In practice, this non-invasive respiratory support is used in stable infants with respiratory distress or mild apnea of prematurity as an alternative to nasal continuous positive airway pressure. Please refer to the most recent updated literature for data on its efficacy and safety in your particular patient population. Indications for high flow nasal cannula may include respiratory distress syndrome, mild apnea of prematurity, or as post-extubation respiratory support when weaning from mechanical ventilation. Contraindications for high flow nasal cannula may include coanal atresia, frank apnea, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, or gastrointestinal tract obstruction. The following section outlines the equipment currently being used at one of our neonatal intensive care units to set up high-flow nasal cannula in a neonatal patient. You should follow your own institution's guidelines. Hey there, uh, today we're going to be going through a heated high-flow nasal cannula circuit used here um, in the NICU, the NICU setting. I'll take you through the components, uh, what we typically use the high-flow nasal cannula for patient population, the idea, the objectives behind it, and uh, we'll go through each part and then we will construct it on the circuit and kind of demonstrate the different components um, within the circuitry and then uh, the hardware involved on the, um, to make up the components on the, uh, on the pole. So here we have the components which will make up um, the high flow circuit. So first here we have what would be um, a packaged complete high flow circuit and the components in this bag are laid out on the table. Inside the bag we have a single limb heated uh, circuit here. Um, it has a heater wire throughout and uh, two, two uh, inputs for your temp probe here, both here and here. Also along with that heated limb is a non-heated extension tubing if you want to need to use that for um, extra length or to put inside of an isolate or something to that effect. Uh, this piece right here comes in the circuit. This is a pressure relief device um, and on top of that is uh, a tubing connector which we'll go through how to connect that. Um, this is the water chamber um, for the uh, water to be heated um, and this has the spike that will be spiking the bag of uh, sterile water for inhalation. Um, we have our temp probe, basic temp probe, and then we have the actual high flow cannula that we, you will be directly attaching to the patient. And then a little piece of extension oxygen tubing that we will be fixing onto a flow meter to the top of the pressure relief device, which will be powering or which will be used for the um, powering of the, of the high flow circuit to the liter flow that you desire. So those are the components. And then we will set up from beginning to end the circuit. Okay, so now we are going to go through setting up the complete high flow circuit from plugging it into the gas sources, electrical source, and putting all the individual components onto the circuit. Okay, so our air and oxygen sources will be plugged in to the walls. And we will be hearing a noise from the blender as we plug in the oxygen and air. So we 
have our gas sources connected and now we will plug in our heater to a power source. Okay, so first thing, we're going to hang our water um, right top of the IV pole, as so, pretty easy. Okay, so the next component we will be putting on um, is the water chamber on connected to the humidifier. In this particular model, model, we will be depressing this as so, and we will be sliding this under this collar, and you will hear it pop in as so. Okay, the next component uh, we will connect is the water line to the, hu the um, sterile bag of water for inhalation purposes. Um, attached to the, heater, uh, to the water chamber is this water line. So you, it comes uh, raveled around this piece right here. You unravel it, and for dem demonstration purposes we will not be spiking this bag of water, but this inside of this little plastic connection is a spike. And when you're ready to, you displace the plastic on the bottom. This piece twists off. You take your spike, you spike the bag of water, and then you will see the um, water draining into the water chamber. Okay, so the next component we'll be connecting is the pressure relief device. This will be going on the uh, water chamber. It does not matter which side it goes on. Um, so if you connect it to either side, there is an arrow on the side of the pressure relief device which indicates the flow direction that you need to um, connect with. So this will be attaching to the water chamber just like that. Next piece is um, this piece of um, connective tubing. We are going to connect one end to our flow meter. And the other end is going to go on top of the pressure relief device like so. Now we are going to complete our inspiratory limb of the high flow circuit. So we were going to take our um, circuit and connect this end to the other side of our water chamber as so. Next is the extension tubing as I explained earlier in the video that comes in the circuit. This goes on the distal end of the inspiratory limb as so. And the final component to complete the inspiratory limb is our high flow nasal cannula and that just attaches to the end of the inspiratory limb. So now you have your completed heated inspiratory limb of your high flow nasal cannula. Next we're going to attach our temp probe. Uh, we attach the temp probe on the side of the humidifier. In this particular one you insert the blue with the blue and you twist until you lock it in. The first connection, the closest connection, will go on the bottom portion of the inspiratory limb. Connect that in nice and snug. Next is the distal end, or the further up the circuit is the second input for your temp probe, as so, and nice and firm. And the last thing we do to connect the heated humidified circuit is our heated wire. Our heated wire will go in to the back of the inspiratory limb. This particular heater wire has three prongs and the input also has three prongs. You connect that just like that. Okay, so on this particular high flow setup we have our oxygen blender connected to two different flow meters. The first flow meter is what we will be driving or powering our high flow circuit with. Uh, typically between one and about eight liters of flow. And this is the one that's connected directly to the water chamber. The next flow meter that we have here, this is strictly for analyzing our oxygen content. This one is connected to our oxygen analyzer. 
so this goes into this piece and then our oxygen analyzer is connected up here and this is what is going to be reading our FiO2. When choosing the appropriate high flow nasal cannula size, we base this off the size of the infant's nares. Some common things to watch for and try to avoid would be redness of the nares, blanching of the nares, and complete occlusion of the nares. So to connect to the patient and uh, as the tightening device in the back of the patient's head is this little ring and you slide it forward or backward to fit the patient properly. Okay, to complete the final step of our high flow nasal cannula, we'll be attaching this cannula to a patient or in this case a mannequin. So it's pretty simple. You put it in the nares and then you can wrap it around the patient's head and secure it at the back of the head with this connective ring. You pull it tight so it stays in put just like that.